Hi, welcome back. This is part two of my robotic feline from the ground up video series. In the first episode, I showed off the R&D process and experience that I had while designing a compliant, high power density, three degree of freedom quadruped like. If you missed that video, I recommend that you go back and watch it as it provides a good deal of context for what I'm covering today. Because in this video, I'd like to get that leg powered up and moving. But first, I do need to put together a test platform of some kind with a vertically mounted linear rail for the leg to attach to, so that during testing it isn't just flailing around on my table. Now that being said, let's get to it. I find that things generally run a bit smoother when I take my time to sketch everything out properly, even for something as simple as this. Because of the slow pace, it's nearly impossible to forget any important details like screw head clearances that could easily be glossed over in CAD. I'm using a 400mm linear rail for the leg to ride on. When it arrived, actuation was rather crusty, but I amended this by disassembling it, flushing everything with WD-40, replacing any flattened balls, and then repacking it all with lithium grease. Doing so can be an easy way to improve the functionality of cheap, non-high wind tier linear rails. This red mounting component that I installed between the leg and the rail introduced a bit too much wobble for my taste so I redesigned it for increased skookum factor and printed it out of a more rigid material. It's still a point of contention for me, but should serve its purpose for now. Power distribution and CAN bus communications to the leg are accomplished with a daisy chain link of XT30 plugs and 3-pin JST crimp connectors. The base of this platform consists of an old piece of pressed wood IKEA shelf cut to size. It should be just heavy enough to counteract the spastic velocity changes of the leg while it's under testing. The heart, soul, and muscle of the actuators in this leg really comes from these Modius controllers from MG Bots. These are some incredibly impressive little devices that allow nearly any three-phase BLDC motor to be converted into a very high-performance closed-loop servo drive. These motor drivers use FOC, or field-oriented control, to allow for precise command of the position and output torque of the driven motor. From my understanding, simple trapezoidal brushless motor drivers like those used for electric skateboards and drones use a Hall Effect sensor, or back EMF from the motor, to determine the firing pattern of the six different field orientations possible within the three coils of the stator windings. As the rotor spins, its position can really only be estimated once every 60 degrees, so that the appropriate coils can be sequentially energized. This results in huge ripples in output torque throughout a single revolution, and generally poor performance at low speeds, proving to be pretty bad for anything other than just spinning a propeller. On the other hand, FOC-based sinusoidal drivers like this one seem to commutate the windings in such a way as to interpolate those six different field orientations into a ton of little space vectors, using algorithms to split the stator field into its component direct and quadrature forces, to closely control the stator field so that it remains pinned orthogonally to the rotor field, maximizing the instantaneous torque output and efficiency. This also allows the motor to hold its position, or move in very tiny increments without cogging between poles. There is a great series by MATLAB about motor control that explains how these little devices function far better than I can. 
It's linked in the description of the video if you'd like to learn more. Something I really love about these Modius controllers is that they have native support for CAN bus communication. CAN bus, or Controller Area Network Bus, is a really fast and bulletproof way of sharing data between devices in electrically noisy environments. It was initially developed for the automotive industry as cars' electrical systems got more and more technologically intensive. In a driver's side door, for instance, you may have a node that will be composed of 10 different buttons and interface devices that all need to send ones and zeros to the other nodes in the vehicle. So instead of having all these nodes like the engine control unit, airbags, or media control, talking to each other with tens of meters of designated signal cables that are easily prone to interference, it's much more efficient to convert all that data into addressable information transmittable over a simple three-wire serial bus. And hey, if it's reliable enough for my airbags, then it's certainly good enough to control our robot. Here, I'm just using a program for debugging and configuring the motor drivers called TView. It runs in Python on a host computer and interfaces with the controllers via USB CAN bus converter. It allows us to send simple commands to individual controllers over the CAN bus line to do things like move to certain positions with a specified velocity and feed forward torque. If I provide power to all of the motor drivers and place them in positional control mode, we can see that the leg is able to hold itself in position and comply with external forces, depending on how much current it draws and proportionally the holding torque I allow the PID controllers to use. Now in order to make this leg useful, I essentially need to be able to tell the foot where I want it to go, and then in real time have the computer figure out what angles the three joints need to achieve in order to move the foot to that position in space. A methodology for solving this kind of problem is inverse kinematics, where we can solve for a joint position given a few known variables and some coordinates for the end effector. Thankfully, we can go about this using some plane trigonometry and avoid having to touch any crazy linear algebra. Yes. Let's just focus on the up-down z-axis and the forward-backward x-axis for now. If we draw a few dotted lines, we can actually divide this leg into a series of triangles. And triangles are great because you can solve the entire shape, even if all you have is one angle and the length of a side. So if we know the length of the two solid leg segments, the tibia and the fibia, which we do, as they are both exactly 140 millimeters between joint origins, and we know the values of x and z that correspond to where the foot should be, we have all the parts we need to be able to derive the first two joint angles. After some reduction, we can arrive at this Python function. It computes the required joint angles and radians once provided an XZ foot position in millimeters, compensates for the linear relationship between the concentric hip and knee actuators, and then returns a value in rotations for the controller to use. Now that some simple kinematics are in order, I'd like to try something a little more interesting and dynamic. I'd like the hip abduction adduction axis to remain still at a neutral home position along the y axis, and I'd, I want the foot to follow a trajectory of some sort along x and z. To orient the leg in known space and align the software with the hardware, I first wrote a small homing sequence. This bit of code is intended to home the axes against physical end stops, those being this aluminum post for the abduction adduction axis, and the travel limits of the knee and hip respectively in the leg's fully retracted position. This script works by driving an axis slowly and indefinitely with a low maximum torque cutoff. The instant the axis collides with an end stop, the controller senses that the motor current has exceeded some threshold, holds position, and marks that last index position as zero. It then advances that axis in the other direction to my specified home position. The script then repeats this process with the other two axes, and now they all know where they are. Now for the actual movement, I stole, <coughs> I mean wrote, this bit of code that sends the foot on a sinusoidal trajectory. It creates a new point for the motors to obtain about 60 times per second, and results in a movement that really feels quite fluid. Most of the vibrations observed here are from the test stand wobbling and flexing a bit as the motors rapidly accelerate and decelerate the foot. Alright, I'd like to keep things short and sweet, so I'm going to end this video here. I have some experiments to do with this leg involving trajectory planning, and if any of it's worth sharing, I will definitely do that. But I'm really excited about what's down the road, because in the next main video, I'm likely going to be designing and building the rest of the robot. So I had a lot of work to do for that to happen, and I can't wait to get started. So as always, thank you for your time, I hope you've enjoyed watching, 
and that it's maybe served as some inspiration for your own projects. If so, make sure to click like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of the next video. Cheers!